Hello, Malma Angeles. Thank you for joining us tonight. These are unprecedented and interesting times. Events unfold and change by the minute, and as the days go by, we watch as our leaders cope with the relentless march of this virus and disease. And now to the news. First, in the Philippines, the Department of Public Works and Highways conducted its final inspection of the We Heal as One Center at the Philippine Arena. Erlo bring us for more. In the coming days, the facilities or the mega quarantine facility here in Ciudad de Victoria Complex can now be used for the COVID-19 patients. Days from now, the facilities in the Philippine Arena Complex can now be used for the COVID-19 emergency response. Official from the Department of Public Works and Highways conducted a final inspection of the compound, especially the three tents that is now almost ready to be a mega quarantine facility. DPWH said that they finished all the works and construction of the quarantine facility in the exact date and time of 10 days as promised. Yeah, the key facilities that are actually uh, inputted inside the three tents uh, are just similar with the previous five na mega quarantine nagawa natin sa Luzon area and uh, Metro Manila. And one thing that is good, ang uh, katastasan ng iglesia, nag-offered pa sila ng uh, garden suit nila for the doctors and medical personnel na hindi na sila lalabas. All of the tents is almost complete. Every tent has a divider, new hospital beds, and also another equipment are now finally done. Everything done under the guidelines of the Department of Health. Here's Maligay Development Corporation Chief Operating Officer Attorney Glicerio G.P. Santos IV. Wala nang tigil ang uh, paglilingap natin dahil sa bili ng Ka Eduardo. Inuna natin kaagad yung pagkain, food packs, buong Pilipinas kaagad yan. Pangalawa, yung pagtulong ng Ka Eduardo sa frontliners. Pagkatapos nung sa frontliners, ito na. Itong mga facilities na magagamit natin for a massive action against this epidemic. Mas importante ngayon ng tulungan eh. Mas kailangan ngayon ng tao ang pagtulong ng kapwa-tao. Kaya hindi natin titigilan ng paglingap. Last April 24, the Iglesia Ni Cristo donated 2 million pesos worth of personal protective equipment and other hospital needs to the National Kidney and Transplant Institute or NKTI. And another 13.2 million pesos worth of PPEs and hospital needs to the Quezon City government to help the medical frontliners. Meanwhile, the North Luzon Expressway or NLEX said the toll fee is now free of charge for all those going to the mega quarantine facility. The final touches to the tents by the DPWS personnel is being conducted. On Wednesday, the turnover ceremony of the mega quarantine facility will happen. In the next few days, all of the tents can be used for the COVID-19 patients. Yes, uh, nag-request yung government kasi yung influx ng OFWs natin, sunod-sunod, wala na rin silang mahanap na napupuno na rin na yung mga hotels natin. Eh. Itong Philippine Arena Complex, it was decided na separate uh, ng mga structures. Meron tayong phase 1, phase 2, phase 3, hanggang phase 4 na mga housing. Yung isang phase namin, pinayagan ng kay Eduardo na magamit ng mga OFW. They again expressed their gratitude to the Iglesia ni Cristo Executive Minister Brother Eduardo V. Manalo. Yung opportunity binigay ni kay Eduardo, this opened up a gate of a new beginning for giving a new life for the COVID patients. No? Because people are started to kuyo coming in to happen this step once this become operational. Marami po tayo yung kababayan na sa paligid lang na gustong gumamit so at least uh, sila ay mapakaling din. According to Iglesia Ni Cristo, they will continue to support the initiative of the Philippine government to fight against the COVID-19 pandemic and they will continue to help the community and also the frontliners. Reporting from Manila for Eagle News, Arlo Bringas, we live in interesting times. Malacanang said the government will be filing charges against hospitals that refuse the admission of patients. Presidential spokesperson Harry Roque made this remark after a woman who just gave birth in Caloacan City died of blood loss after being allegedly refused admission by six hospitals where she was rushed. Take a look.
tayong meron po tayong Republic Act number no? 10932 ito po yung anti hospital deposit law no na nagpapataw po ng parusa sa lahat ng mga hospital na hindi tatanggap ng pasyente dahil hindi sila makapagbigay ng deposito inassure po ako ni Secretary Maynard Guevara na iimbestigahan daw po ang kasong ito at kung kinakailangan sasampahan sila ng kaso sa hukuman ng sagayon mapataraw mapataron sila ng parusa no ang uh, Parusa po sa violation ng anti-hospital deposit law, meron po yung kulong. So kung mapatunayan po at meron pong presumption, ha, sa batas po nakasulat dito na yung mga um, talagang hindi tumanggap ay presumed hindi tumanggap dahil hindi makabayad ang deposito, no? ang parusa po dyan ay pagkakakulong. Ikukulong po natin lahat yung mga doktor, lahat ang may-ari ng hospital na naging dahilan po kaya namatay itong uh, pasyenteng ito. The Department of Health reported 198 new persons infected with the coronavirus disease, bringing the total number of confirmed cases to 7,777. Of the total number, 472 are nurses, 464 are physicians or doctors, 69 are nursing assistants, 41 are medical technologists, 25 are radiologic radiological technologists and 10 are midwives. During a COVID-19 virtual presser, DOH Undersecretary Maria Rosario Vergere also reported 70 new recoveries and 10 new deaths. The total number of recovered cases nationwide is now 932, while the death toll has climbed to 511. Prime Minister Hacinda Ardern claimed that New Zealand had scored a significant victory against the spread of COVID-19 as the country began a phased exit from its lockdown. Take a look. There is no widespread undetected community transmission in New Zealand. We have won that battle, but we must remain vigilant if we're to keep it that way. It is not and cannot be a return to pre-COVID-19 life. That day will come, but it is not here yet. To get there, our team of 5 million needs to have zero tolerance for cases to complete our goal of eliminating the virus at level three. If you're unwell, stay home. If you have a runny nose, a sore throat, a cough, get a test. Let's make sure that we keep those testing rates up. We continue with our contact tracing and isolation. That's how we'll finish this job. What I would say is that our goal is elimination. And again, that doesn't mean eradication, but it means we get down to a small number of cases and so that we are able to stamp out any cases and any outbreaks that might come up. Dr. Bloomfield, what do you make of suggestions by some leaders overseas that people should be injecting themselves with bleach to kill COVID-19? <laughs> don't think I need to comment on that, Prime Minister. No, I think probably we'll, we'll let your silence speak for itself. Toba. It is worth asking about though, isn't it? Before after nearly five weeks at the maximum level for restrictions, with only essential services operating, the country will move to level three late on Monday. Now that will allow some businesses to take away food outlets and schools to reopen, but Prime Minister Arden warned there was no certainty about when all transmission can be eliminated, allowing a return to normal life. The easing of restrictions came as New Zealand, a nation of five million people, reported only one new case of COVID-19 in the past 24 hours, taking the total to 1,122 with 19 deaths. <sighs> Meanwhile, tens of thousands of students returned to school in Shanghai and Beijing after months of closures as China's major cities gradually returned to normal. Shanghai students in their final year of middle and high school returned to classrooms while only high school seniors in Beijing were allowed back on campus to prepare for the all-important Gaokao University entrance exam. And Norway, which, is, which says it has the new coronavirus epidemic under control, reopened primary schools to the youngest students on Monday in another step toward a gradual normalization, though some parents express concern. One week after nursery schools, pupils aged 6 to 10 started returning to their school desks after six weeks of remote learning from home in the Nordic country. Classes were, however, reduced to a maximum of 15 students. And Mexico raised its health emergency level following a rapid increase in coronavirus cases and amid fears the health system could collapse. Health Undersecretary Hugo lopez Gatel said the country was moving to phase three of its response to the deadly pandemic. 
es se suspenden todas las actividades laborales no esenciales en los sectores público, social y privado. ¿Por qué razón? He also said we're in a phase of rapid increase where we are accumulating a large number of infections and hospital admissions. Now, what you see here on the video is the Guadalajara, Mexico's second largest town, digging 700 graves for a likely surge in the number of deaths from COVID-19 following the example of other cities in the country. The government has already suspended all non-essential economic activity until May 30 and asked people to stay at home and practice social distancing, although it has not enforced a mandatory quarantine. Areas that successfully contain the spread of the coronavirus will be allowed to lift social distancing measures on May 17. President Andres Manuel López Obrador has been widely criticized for his response to the pandemic, taking much longer than other countries in the region to impose lockdown measures. Last month, Human Rights Watch accused López Obrador, or the president, of setting a profoundly dangerous example that threatens Mexicans' health by flouting social distancing guidelines and continuing to hold rallies and greet supporters with handshakes and hugs. Latest numbers, coronavirus cases in Mexico is 14,677, deaths 1,351, recovered cases 8,354. Eagle News will be right back. UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson has spoken to the public for the first time since recovering from COVID-19. Our EBC correspondent in the United Kingdom, Erica Celestino, joins us live. Hello, Erica. Hello, Alma. Thank you. And yes, that's correct. Uh, British Prime Minister Boris Johnson on Monday made his first public appearance in nearly a month after a spell in hospital and several days in intensive care with novel coronavirus. In a statement outside his Downing Street office, he said Britain was beginning to turn the tide in tapping COVID-19, but indicated no immediate lifting of lockdown restrictions. Let's listen in. I'm and that is how and why we are now beginning to turn the tide. If this virus were a physical assailant, an unexpected and invisible mugger, which I can tell you from personal experience it is, then this is the moment when we have begun together to wrestle it to the floor. Looking now at our apparent success, and beginning to wonder whether now is the time to go easy on those social distancing measures. And I know how hard and how stressful it has been to give up, even temporarily, those ancient and basic freedoms, not seeing friends, not seeing loved ones, working from home, managing the kids, worrying about your job as anyone. And so, yes, I entirely share your urgency. It's the government's urgency. And yet we must also recognize the risk of a second spike. Because that would mean not only a new wave of death and disease, but also an economic disaster. And we would be forced once again to slam on the brakes across the whole country and the whole economy and reimpose restrictions in such a way as to do more and lasting damage. And we collectively flattened the peak. 
And so when we're sure that this first phase is over and that we're meeting our five tests, deaths falling, NHS protected, rate of infection down, really sorting out the challenges of testing and PPE, avoiding a second peak, then that will be the time to move on to the second phase in which we continue to suppress the disease and keep the reproduction rate, the R rate down, but begin gradually to refine the economic and social restrictions and one by one to fire up the engines of this vast UK economy. Its lowest daily rise in coronavirus deaths in nearly four weeks, as official confirmed, Prime Minister Boris Johnson had returned to Downing Street after recovering from the virus. The number of people who have died rose by 413 to 20,732, officials said on Sunday, the lowest reported daily increase in April. The last time the health department recorded a smaller increase was on the 31st of March when 381 deaths were registered. The latest figures were published just hours before PM Johnson returned. Despite the slowdown, which came at a weekend when the toll has often been lower, Environment Secretary George Eustis said on Sunday that lockdown rules should remain in place. The UK was initially placed into lockdown on the 23rd of March. This was extended on the 16th of April and a review is due on the 7th of May. Despite Sunday's lower death toll, Britain remains one of the worst hit countries in the world by the virus. The government has been under scrutiny, especially over sh shortages in protective equipment and a lack of widespread testing, particularly of frontline health and social care workers. Back to you, Alma. All right. Thank you, Erica, for your updates. And we'll see you soon. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thank you, Alma. Reporting from London, United Kingdom, this is Erika Solisino, and we live in interesting times. An easing of lockdown measures in Spain, and for the first time in six months, children were now allowed to play outside. Also, Spain regist registered its lowest daily death toll. Joining us live from Madrid is Julianne Aala. Hello, Julie. Hello, Alma. Thank you. And here are the updates here in Spain. Spain has reported its lowest daily death toll in more than a month. 288 more people have died of the virus, the lowest number since 20th of March, according to the health ministry. This is a steep drop from the 378 deaths recorded on Saturday. On Sunday, children under the age of 14 were allowed to leave their homes for the first time in six weeks. They are now allowed outside for one hour a day. Prime Minister Pedro Sanchez also announced Saturday that Spaniards will also be allowed out for exercise and to take walks from next weekend, with a state of emergency extended this week until May 9. Unlike most other countries, since imposing a lockdown on March 14, Spain has not allowed anyone out for walks, jogs, or bike rides. Here in Spain, Alma, we are only allowed to leave home only to buy food or medicine or for a medical emergency. We are also allowed to briefly walk the dog. Also, Spain's health minister, Salvador Illa, said last Sunday, it would be imprudent to promise the football season would restart before the summer. The minister sounded a note of caution over La Liga plans to test players for the virus before returning to training and resuming a season suspended on March 12. He said giving priority to footballers might breach government policy before players, players can return to the pitch. They will have to undergo COVID-19 screening tests. They will then continue to be monitored on a regular basis. Reporting here in Madrid, Spain, I am Juliana Alla, and we live in interesting times. Thank you, Julianne. Let's go over to New York. The governor, Governor Andrew Cuomo, said the state may gradually 
restart opening some businesses in mid-May. We have more. Joining us live from New York is Tenny Sumagi. Hello, Tenny. Hi, Alma. Hi. Good evening to you. Good evening. <laughs> How are you? <laughs> staying home, staying safe. <laughs> Very good. What are your updates for us, Tenny? Well, Governor Cuomo's, Andrew Cuomo's plan is to reopen New York City by, or I, I would say New York State, mm -hmm. projected by May, May 15. Mm -hmm. So he does plan to open the state, uh, or jobs, I should say, mm -hmm. through phases. So that's a great plan because we are the epicenter of this COVID virus, COVID-19 virus. So um, it's a great start and a great plan for, for New York, especially in New York City. Mm -hmm. I believe you have a soundbite for that. Let's listen in. Yes. Risky. It, the pause is statewide until May 15th, right? Then you have the CDC guidance that says hospital, uh, total hospitalization is declining for 14 days. So phase one of reopening will involve construction construction and manufacturing activities. Phase two would then be more a business by business analysis using the matrix that we've discussed. How essential a service does that business provide? And how risky is that business? Then we're going to leave two weeks between phases so we can monitor the effect of what we just did, right? Take an action, monitor. Okay, so Jenny, you are one of my favorite uh, sports reporters. <laughs> now, uh, New York Governor Cuomo said he can envision baseball games being played without fans this summer. Uh, what is the development on that? <laughs> Thank you for your humbling comment. I'm very honored that I'm one of your favorite <laughs> sports correspondents. <laughs> but on that plan, yeah, uh, he envisioned that baseball games, preferably in City Field where the Mets play and Yankee Stadium, mm -hmm. that it, um, it's a it's a possible vision to to have to start by the summer mm -hmm. without fans. Mm -hmm. But it's, it this really depends on the owners and their plan and their vision to make that happen. Mm -hmm. And owners just have to think of a economic plan, kind of think outside the box, mm -hmm. whether this can actually happen. Mm -hmm. So with, for me as a sports fan, a journalist, I mean, to, to play games without fans, I don't, it seems unrealistic because the fans really make the games, um, I would alive. say, <laughs> alive, <Yeah. laughs> right? And, and even players, I know NBA players have said it. LeBron James has said it that, you know, without fans, there's just no life because they bring on the energy. You mm -hmm. know, when you hear the cheers, the boos, it it really motivates the players. That's but. True. As on the second hand, we all want us. We miss sports. We miss watching it. You know, we we're we're watching reruns. I mean, we need this. Yes. <laughs> we, you know, it's kind of like we need something great to watch other than COVID updates. That's so true. it's kind of just <laughs> it will make fans and the and the country very happy. So mm -hmm. I'm glad that uh, Governor Cuomo envisioned and just agreed that. You know, it, it's it's possible for MLB games to start by at least the summer. Mm -hmm. Although he did say he was uh, gradually opening the state, right? So yes, gradually opening in in phases. So what his plan is, is well, here in New York, it's just as long as people are have been quarantined for fourteen days, and we we adhere to the CDC guidelines. And, mm -hmm. you know, we're New Yorkers. We've gone through so much. We've gone through 9-11, the recession in 2009, and Hurricane Sandy. You know, mm -hmm. this is probably the greatest obstacle we as New York 
New Yorkers have faced. Mm -hmm. But we're strong, we're resilient. We really admire what Governor Cuomo has done for us and even people outside of New York. They want him as president now <laughs> over Donald Trump. So there's that <laughs> trust, there's that confidence in his leadership that you know our, our economy, our country will overcome this and uh, over to overcome this crisis. Indeed. All right, thank you very much, Denny. Stay strong, stay positive, and stay healthy. Thank you for your time. Okay, Russia's coronavirus cases outdo, has outdone China's, has outdone China's record. Joining us live from Russia is Emmy Coloma. Hello, Emmy. Hello, Emmy. Oh. How are you? There you are. <laughs> what are your updates for us, Emmy? Uh, Russia's coronavirus cases outdo China's. Russia confirmed 6,198 new coronavirus infections today, April 27, 2020, bringing the country's total confirmed cases to 87,147 with 7,346 recovered and 794 deaths, which overtook the China's record of world's ninth most affected country due to pandemic. Most confirmed cases are from Moscow. All of the 12 million residents are ordered to stay at home with a very few exemptions. Also, Russia's 85 regions are affected by the continuous accelerating number of infections. Moscow authorities continue to, to tighten the city's self-isolation order, even during the holidays and the most awaited Russian celebration every year, the Russia's Victory Day. Meanwhile, Anna Popova, head of Russia's consumer health watchdog, foresee a possible sharp and mobile spike in total number of cases if the mandatory self-isolation will, will, will be lifted this month. The latter argued to extend the mandatory self-quarantine for another two weeks until the middle of May. However, Kremlin issued a statement that the worsening situation of the coronavirus will last for no more than two months. Back to you, Alma. All right. Thank you very much, Emmy, for that update. Meantime, um, we have a uh, live press briefing from President Duterte. Thank you, Emmy, for your time. Salamat. Okay, rampant speculations and questions on the health of the North Korean leader, Kim Jong-un. We have a report coming in and joining us live from Seoul is Christine Jewel Oyabut. Hello, Christine. Hello, Alma. Yes, that's true. There are rumors arose regarding the health condition of North Korea's President Kim Jong-un since his absence in an annual event at the Kumsu San Palace last April 15 to commemorate the birth of North, North's founding father, Kim's late grandfather, Kim Il-sung. Kim also missed another national holiday, the North Korea's Military Foundation Day, making much more speculations about his health. Due to his absence at one of the country's most in, important events, multiple reports suggested that Kim was in grave danger after his cardiovascular surgery earlier this month. Meanwhile, Moon Chong-in, the top foreign policy advisor to the president, said that Kim Jong-un is alive and well, and he has been staying in the Wonsan area since April 13. Former Unification Minister and Executive Vice Chair of the National Unification Advisory Council, Jong Se-hyun, dismissed the recent reports of Kim being gravely ill as fake news generated by the opponents of stronger inter-Korean relations. The not-so-clear details about Kim's health is gaining traction once again because Kim has had serious health problems and a long family history of heart issues. Back to you, Alma. All right. So uh, with regards to uh, your situation there now on the uh, coronavirus, how, how are things going? Yes, it's getting better nowadays. So according to Vice Health and Welfare Minister Kim jong Lip, the when and how or the return to physical instruction will likely happen gradually and most likely it's, it will start from next month which is may and then it will be starting with the third year students in middle and high school 
And also, according to the Vice Health and Welfare Minister, the when and how will be decided based on the opinions from parents, educators, experts, and relevant ministries with the details to be announced in early May at the latest. And also, Korea has largely brought the coronavirus under control, which has only 10 new cases reported today, with the number of new infections hovering around 10 for the ninth straight day. Most of the newly discovered cases come from overseas. Korea is now preparing to transition to routine distancing, which would allow people to return to their regular routines while combating the spread of the coronavirus. All right, thank you very much, Christine, and uh, stay healthy, stay safe. Thank you so much for your time. Yes, this is Christine Jewel Uy Gabut. We live in interesting times. Meanwhile, Andre Lankov, an analyst based in Seoul, said all the recent reports about North Korean leader Kim Jong Un's health should be taken with a massive grain of salt. All state, all this stuff you have heard in the last week should be taken with a massive grain of salt uh, because it has always been difficult and now impossible to get anything. And everything related to the health issue is always closely guarded secret in the world's most secretive society. And to make things further compli uh, more complicated, we have uh, COVID-19 pandemics. This. I'm very skeptical about reports about his death, judging by behavior of the top North Korean officials. They are not acting as if, as they would act had they known that he has died or is just about to die. North Korean generals and top politicians will not start fighting for power or it will be just a limited fight for power and they will accept a new leader who is likely to be some, somebody of the Kim family, most likely Kim Yo-jong, Kim Jong-un's sister, and things will remain stable. Very unpleasant uh, for people who are unlucky to live in North Korea. Uh, but when, if you have a civil war, it's worse than to have a dictatorship, frankly. A Filipina in New South Wales recovered from COVID-19 and shares her story. Our ABC correspondent Diana Pedro was able to talk to her. Take a look. A Filipina living here in New South Wales, Australia, contracted the coronavirus and was stricken with a much-feared illness for three weeks until she tested negative. Here to share her story of healing and recovery, Cecil Rebano. Hello, good afternoon, Cecil. Uh, thank you for joining us here on ABC News. Hello, uh, thank you for having me here too. But How are you? Um, recovered. <laughs> That's very good okay, to hear. Good. Yes. How did you find out that you had the virus? Uh, for their family, for 
the kids. So you weren't hospitalized, and it sounds like the nurse that you were talking to、um, thought that maybe what you were experiencing weren't as bad as others. But as you described it, you didn't necessarily had it easy as well.、Um, yeah. So what was the most difficult part of your experience? The persistent fever、mm. and the risk because I'm diabetic and、oh. I have um, um, pulmonary hypertension. And I have apnea as well.、Mm. Like these are all, you know,、uh, I'm high risk.、Yes. Actually, I'm high risk, and anything could happen. And how about what's the most exper-、um, inspiring experience that you had? What made you strong? What I did was I prayed. I prayed a lot, and then I said, if this is COVID, you know, a lot of people die, and then I, I just prayed to God. I said,、um, if it's my time, I'm gonna accept it. You know, but. What's your message to、uh, the people that were with you throughout your journey? Your family, your friends, and your loved ones. I am、uh, first,、um, of course,、uh, to my family、uh, because they were strong for me. They didn't show any weakness at all. Like, and to my、um, doctor, to my、uh, GP, of course, for being like always available when I call. You know, like.、Um, And also to my sister, to my sister is also the doctor. Like he was always like twenty four seven, almost like always、uh, monitoring me. And she was the one that really like calm, and, you know. Yeah. So and to my friends and relatives for supporting me for the prayer, especially my、uh, the brethren,、uh, my brethren in the Jesuit Christian Church of Christ for praying for me and always. You know, How about a message to our viewers, Bob? Be strong.、Uh, don't entertain any negative thoughts. Pray, pray a lot to people in this situation that we have now. You know, everyone wants to be safe. So,、um, if there is anyone who is a, a coronavirus positive, don't discriminate. Be kind to the patients. You know. Um, thank you very much, Cecil.、Um, you, you were very inspiring. Thank you for sharing your story with us and your optimism. I'm sure many will be inspired to be strong、um, in the midst of this pandemic. This is Diana Pedro reporting from New South Wales, Australia. We live in interesting times. Thank you, Diana. Eagle News. We'll be right back. A stabbing incident in Yokohama, probable earthquake in Nankai Trough, and the boy band's map, whose had its name changed to New Map, has donated 30 million yen to the frontliners to fight COVID-19. Our EBC correspondent Dennis Liu has more. An unemployed man, Yuki Nishiyama, 24, tried to stab the back of a 23-year-old woman known working in a real estate company in an apartment room in Asahi Ward. Of Yokohama City recently, a real estate woman working in a company in Yokohama City was stabbed by a man pretending as a customer and was seriously injured. The man accused later said that he did not want to rent an apartment from the very beginning. He was also accused of robbing a car. 
In Nishiyama's interviews with the police, he revealed that he had no intention of renting an apartment from the beginning. Nishiyama also admitted his intention to kill the woman and take away some cash. The authorities are still investigating the motives of the crime. In the entertainment industry, the used-to-be five-member SMAP now became new MAP with only three members, Goro Inagaki, 46, Tsuyoshi Kusanagi, 45, and Shingo Katori, 43, formed Atarohi Chizu, or new MAP. New MAP with Nippon Foundation donated 30 million yen to support frontliners and their families. New MAP actors are Goro Inagaki, Tsuyoshi Kusanagi, and Shingo Katori, and the Nippon Foundation mentioned today, April 27th, launched a new project called Love Pocket Fund to support measures against the new coronavirus and support frontliner families or medical personnel with their family members. The 30 million yen or about 280,000 U.S. dollars will be donated to the project of the new group. This is to express their appreciation for the support of their fans and supporters. The Nippon Foundation joined the new map and decided to be together in their will to support. They believe that there is a great power when everyone becomes united and one. When this fund raising started in spring this year, it mainly support women, children, and the elderly. The support contents details are now available on their official website. In another news, according to some experts, the probability of a huge earthquake occurring in the Nankai Thru is estimated 70 to 80 percent within the next 30 years to happen and maintain the maximum number of deaths and missing persons is estimated to an approximate 231,000 people. The Nankai Thru or Nankai Torafu, meaning Southern Sea Thru, is a submarine through located in the south of the Nankaido, a region of Japan's island of Honshu, which extending approximately 900 kilometers offshore. If an earthquake of magnitude 8 happened in half of an assumed epicenter, a large earthquake may occur in the other half of the epicenter. The government is already planning to issue a temporary information to alert residents for a possible second earthquake to let those who cannot escape to the hills and evacuation facilities to immediately evacuate within one week. According to a newspaper company, calls will be made to 139 municipalities in 14 capital prefectures from Chiba to Kagoshima, which will be the areas in the tsunami evacuation countermeasures area. 14 prefectures on the Pacific side are said to suffer major damage within a short period. As of now, there are some cities, towns, and villages that have not been determined as a pre-evacuation location because the Disaster Prevention Conference could not be done due to the current situation of the COVID-19. Other reasons were due to the shortage of evacuation shelters for a long period of time. The discussion with residents also contributed to the delay. Reporting from Tokyo, Japan, this is Dennis Liu for Eagle News. We live in interesting times. To commemorate its 52nd anniversary, Eagle Broadcasting Corporation held an online concert series to raise COVID-19 relief for health workers, frontliners, and affected communities with the FYM Medical Foundation as its sole beneficiary. Take a look. The e-concerts was supported by staysafe.ph. The e-concert supported by staysafe.ph dubbed Enjoy Music Beyond the Crisis was conducted on April 26 from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. And it will be again conducted on May 3, 10, and the 17th. It will be participated in by more than 30 local and international artists, including upcoming singers with original compositions who will perform from their respective homes. Now, to donate, viewers can go to pymy.co slash ebc or scan the QR code flashed on their screens. Listen. <laughs> Oh, 
right before we go, may we leave you with a word of hope. Together we are strong, together we can persevere. Getting through this will take everyone working together. Let's do our part. And I would like to greet Brother Angelo Manalo. A very happy birthday po. Happy, happy birthday. And I'm Alma Angeles. We live in interesting times.